Hi, I'm Owen from REST Australia. Thanks for tuning in to the REST Network. Before we get into today's show, there are a few things we have to go over. Firstly, what you're about to hear and see is limited to general information only. It's not personal financial advice like you'd get from a financial planner. Also, it's important to remember that past performance is not indicative of future performance. That means that anything that's happened in the past, or we say today, is not necessarily going to reflect what happens in the future. Lastly, please consider that any of the guests or myself are featuring on this program may have a financial interest in some of the products or shares mentioned. That's enough from me. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Kate Campbell, welcome to this episode of the Australian Finance Podcast. It is going to be our fastest episode ever, on. Our fastest episode. Why, <laughs> Kate? Because it's about insurance and we don't... Well, you don't necessarily like talking about insurance that much. Yeah, I think insurance is a really big topic and often needs experts involved. And so I wanted to just do a super high level overview of all the different types of insurances that we could think of off the top of our head this morning and maybe a little bit about what they are. And then if you're interested in each one, either let us know to do a whole episode on it or go and do some research and we'll provide all the links to learn about each of these insurances in the show notes. Yep. Okay. So first of all, why do you need insurance? Insurance is really important because you don't want to blow yourself up. People think that you know, insurance is just an unnecessary cost, but it's actually something for that like 5% of time or that 1% of the times when things go really bad. So it's about protecting you and keeping you in the game. Um, one of the things that I learned when I was studying finance is that typically what keeps poorer people poor is the inability to recover from loss, mm. whereas rich people can recover from losses. That's the general definition. It's not my definition, but that's generally accepted. And the way you protect yourself is by having insurance. We're yeah. going to talk about the different forms of that in just a moment. Just at the outset, a couple of quick things like terminology wise. When we say um, premium, that's the amount that you pay. So if you have a thousand dollars car insurance premium, that's the, what you have to pay. When we talk about excess, that's what you have to contribute if something goes wrong. So if you crash your car and you have to pay a thousand bucks, that's your excess. Waiting periods, that's the time for when you sign the insurance, how long till you can make a claim. And a claim is when you actually lodge with the insurer. Mm. Okay, Kate, now we've done those definitions. Let's get into a quick fire. All right, very first one, which we touched on in our super episode, life, TPD and income protection insurance. Yeah, so life should be called death insurance because then you know what it covers. It covers if you pass away and it typically goes to whoever you nominate. If you hold this inside super, you can make a, a, a nomination as we talked about. TPD is the same, permanent disability. That's basically what it means. If you really hurt yourself, if you maim yourself, then, for example, you will receive a payout to your estate or to, through your super fund. Income protection can be held inside or outside of super. I highly recommend income protection for anyone that has responsibilities in their lives. So I'm talking about people that have a single income, uh, family, mortgage, uh, education expenses, and you might be out of work. If you work in a high-risk industry, get it. If you play footy on weekends, get it. I hold my income protection inside super. And if you're interested in learning more, you can call your super fund and they've actually got experts you can talk to on the phone for free for information on this. And they've actually got um, guides on their website as well that explain things. Yeah. Awesome. The next one is health insurance, something that's been very useful for me recently because I have extras cover on my private health insurance. So you have maybe three different types, which you can combine. You've got the ambulance cover, which is going to cover you if you have to call triple zero and the ambulance has to come pick you up off the ground and take you to hospital. Yep. And you can get that through your insurance packaged in, or you can go to something like Ambulance Victoria and just pay the one-off fee for, for the year. Yep. So check with your state because some states do it differently. For example, New South Wales needs um, through your private health insurance in Victoria. For example, you have to go to Ambulance Victoria. Um, and you should also check reciprocal rights. If you have Ambulance Victoria and you are in a car crash in Queensland, what happens? Yep. Understand those risks um, and make an informed choice. Yeah. Then you've got the basic level of private health insurance cover. Yep. So um, the basic level of private health insurance cover basically is the cover. So that covers you when you go to hospital. Um, so there's two, you said you got, you got extras. Yes. You made a claim on optical the other day. Yes. If you've got bad eyesight, extras come in very handy because yep. they cover your yearly visits to spec savers. Yeah, that's it. So... <laughs> There's two different things here. We have the extras, which is like physio, dental, all that. And then Mm. we have hospital cover. And that's actually if you go to hospital. They're two different things. It's important to recognize, but the hospital cover is the thing that gets you out of paying extra tax if you earn over 90,000 or 180 as a couple. And the hospital cover covers you if you go to hospital. Pretty basic. Um, The extras cover is all the extra stuff, dental, optical, physio, um, myotherapy, all that sort of stuff that might be bundled in there. 
Of course, you can always use the public healthcare system and you can self-insure yourself for health insurance. So you could put $100 away each month when you're paid for things like getting glasses and going to the dentist. So you can just create your own... We are in a truly wonderful country, Kate, where we have the best healthcare system in the world. Well, maybe um, France or maybe Italy Mm -hmm. or the UK would disagree with me there, but basically we do. And so that means that you can rely on a healthcare system. If you want to do things like uh, elective surgeries, obviously you probably want to have private health insurance. But remember this, if you earn over $90,000 as a single or if you earn over $180,000 as a couple or family, um, you will be paying something called the Medicare levy surcharge. We've got a separate video on that. And that's an extra tax that you pay. So um, go back and listen to our other episodes on private health insurance. Yeah. All right. Next one, Owen, car insurance, which I like to remain willfully ignorant on because I do not enjoy driving. Yeah. So there are basically, there are a few different levels. Um, There's bomb insurance, which is the, the, the idea of this is that you drive a bomb, a terrible car. And bomb insurance basically just protects everyone else and not your car. So if your car, you know, if you ram your car into another car, um, it protects the other car, but not yours. So this is basic. You have to have this cover in Australia um, because it also protects for things like pedestrians. So it's part of uh, like the legal requirement in every state. Um, there are others like fire and theft so that if it's basically the next one up from bomb insurance, which is basically where if your car is um, explodes in a fire or if it is stolen, you will either get market value or they'll try and replace that car. Um, So that's the next one up. But the top of the range is comprehensive car insurance. So this would be like extras and hospital car cover from uh, the health insurance equivalent. So if someone scratches your car while getting out of the car park? Yeah, that's it. So this is the type of thing that could be covered on that. Um, Important point though, let's say you scratch your car or someone scratches your car and it causes $500 worth of damage. You probably don't want to make a claim because you will have to, you will be out of pocket with your um, your excess that you mm. have to pay. So typically, what happens here? How do you make a different a decision between whether I get the cheap insurance or the comprehensive insurance? This is particularly important if you're under thirty. Um, is would you be able to afford to replace your car? And I think that's a really good question. If you can afford to replace your car in cash, you probably don't need insurance. Uh, you probably don't need the comprehensive. You still need third party. Um, but if it's the type of car where it is quite expensive. You need comprehensive. And also, if you've got finance on your car, you'll need comprehensive car insurance. It's typically a requirement. So some rules, shop around every year. Um, Kate's got a reminder here to say, set a reminder in your phone <laughs> for when it, when it comes up because typically what happens is new cars, uh, new insurance um, customers get the better deal than the existing. So yep. shop around. And also finding out what your excess is. So yep. it might be $2,000 if you're younger. Um, and make sure your emergency fund incorporates this in because you need to be able to cough up this money and it won't be part of your normal financial planning because you didn't expect this event to happen. Yep. So just like um, with superannuation, we had the Your Super uh, website. With health insurance, we've got health.gov.au. And with car insurance, you can basically head anywhere. Um, Like the comparison sites have them. Um, You can start with like your, say like the RACV, RACQ, um, you know, all of those big names that you know and compare a few and see what 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 the go is. Kate, Home and contents insurance. Um, so one of these applies to homeowners. One of them applies to renters. Uh, well, I guess both of them apply to homeowners. So what are they? Yeah, home insurance is going to protect your house if it burns down um, or any number of things like the storms recently. Yep. Um, so if it's damaged, um, all sorts of reasons, you can um, pick what amount it's covered up to, yep. can't you? There are two different options basically. So you, you have... Uh, replacement cost but you can also have like an agreed value yeah. um, you just got to always 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 be careful with the t's and c's here um, it's important to shop around and to call the uh, insurer and ask them what you are and are not covered for this is especially important if you are in a bushfire prone area if you are in a flood prone area these two things are incredibly important because insurers typically don't want to cover you. Check their definitions. If you are in a flood prone area, is it the rising of water? Is it water damage? Like what does it actually mean? Uh, we're trying to clean up this industry as a whole, but just be mindful of that. If you turned your house upside down, Kate, and all the stuff that fell out of it would be close to what's covered under contents insurance. Yeah. So if you've got gold bars at home or lots of jewelry or a lot of technology or expensive equipment, you might want to cover that. And so you want to have really good details of all of the items, the serial numbers. So if someone comes and steals all your stuff, you've got it insured up to a certain value and you can prove what the items were. Basically, we've got building insurance which is the insurance that you um, you get for your home, so home insurance, and then we've got contents insurance. Now, you said gold bars, you said jewellery. If you do decide to have really expensive things like that in your house, 
what's important is that they're covered as specifically covered items. So you'll probably, there'll be allowances. So there might be $2,000 for jewelry, but you might say, I've got $10,000 and you'll need to note that in your application for contents insurance. Some other things, if your, if your house is well secured with like deadlock doors and all these types of things and secure security blinds and all that sort of stuff, your insurance will come down. So keep that in mind. If you live in an apartment, you might not need home insurance because it might be covered by the strata or body corp. Uh, these are just the types of things. But you can speak to people about this. Head to like iSelect, yeah. uh, compare the market. All those different websites have information on these things. And there's particular companies now that you can just go and insure one individual item. So, yeah. um, Like an engagement ring. Yeah, yeah. You can just say, I just want to insure this. I don't need the whole contents policy. I just want this one individual item. And you might do that if you've got a really expensive... Um, piece of technology or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So with our uh, engagement ring, what we did was we got that insured separately because if we got it under the contents insurance, it would only cover us in Australia. Mm -hmm. So if we travelled overseas, we needed an insurance that went with us. So it's important right. to know the difference. Yeah. Uh, pet insurance, Kate. We covered uh, pet insurance in a recent episode with the CEO of RSPCA Victoria. Um, pet insurance covers typically only cats and dogs. So if you're like me, a rabbit owner, you won't get covered. If you own uh, a goose or a camel. Chances are you won't get insurance for that. <laughs> so importantly, cats and dogs um, start early, to, to be honest as well. Get in early, um, as we, we spoke about uh, in that episode. There are some um, deals with vets where vets provide their own kind of cover where it's like yeah. a capped amount, like a subscription for your pet. Keep that in mind. Um, dogs are pretty much most expensive when they're young and old. So yeah. anywhere in between, they're typically okay. Again, you can create some sort of self-insurance system by just yep. putting $100 each Absolutely month can. into an account to at, deal with that. At the end of this episode, we're going to cover a type of insurance that doesn't cost you anything. Uh, in fact, it's probably the cheapest insurance you'll ever find. Uh, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Kate, funeral insurance. Okay, this is an interesting one. Money Smart actually, if you go to their website, look at the words funeral insurance, they say they're pretty scathing up front. They actually say that funeral insurance can cost you a lot more than the benefit your family yep. is going to receive. And if you stop making repayments, you lose the value already paid. So, and if you keep going on throughout that page, they even list pros and cons and there's a lot more in the cons column. So I think for many of our listeners, I'm not sure if people would even consider funeral insurance. Maybe if you're no. closer to that period of life, I would personally just plan for it separately and make sure I had assets to leave my family behind that would cover those costs. I would too. Yeah, I wouldn't get this. I would just have... So with any of these things, with insurance in particular, for these types of expenses, you can just set money aside. So keep that in mind before you go and get insurance. Like for your pets, how much do I need to put aside? Mm. Um, there does come a time where the, the cost outweighs the benefit. Yeah. Travel insurance, Kate, is actually really important, I think. Yeah, um, if anyone's got to use yeah. that recently, congrats <laughs> on <laughs> yeah. getting out of the country. Yep. But... Um, if you're planning a, an overseas trip at some point, uh, travel insurance is really important. That's going to cover you for all manner of things that occur overseas. Of course, you can get all different levels. If you're planning to go snowboarding um, overseas, then you'll need probably an adventurous sports yeah. level of travel insurance because the costs to airlift you back and deal with that are a lot higher. So Yeah, so some of the things you might keep in mind if you're going skiing in Japan is that you might not get covered under your travel insurance if you ski off the groomed runs. So if you go through the trees and you hurt yourself, you might not be covered by travel insurance. So this is an example of where reading the terms and conditions is really important. Or for example, if there's any alcohol in your system and you're in Bali or Indonesia and you decide to get on a scooter, probably not a good idea. Yeah. Um, in fact, any type of alcohol, you probably might not be able to claim anything. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, and even if you're wanting to cover cancellation of flights and delays mm -hmm. and things where you get stuck on a layover, double check all that because I, a lot of those have changed the fine print post-COVID. So new policies might not include COVID cancelled flights and things like that. So just make sure you read the fine print there um, and read the fine print flight lost and stolen baggage and all those kind of things. Yep, and there's plenty of information on Choice, the consumer website, and also on Money Smart. The, the, the final piece of um, paid insurance that we're going to cover here is work cover. Work cover should be paid for you by your employer if you're working on a job site or if you're working in an office, for example. It will be paid for you. Um, they, this provides compensation for you if you hurt yourself at work. Keep in mind, this is different to income protection. If you walk outside the building and you're no longer on work hours, you probably won't be covered by work cover. So keep that in mind. But this can occasionally um, cover for things that like are uh, like plan trips for work or if you're at a work event that's not actually at work these can sometimes um, be in place for that too so there's a lot of information here head to fairwork.gov.au if you want to learn more about work cover um, and also i would say just with work cover in particular it's 
some people kind of um, frown upon it. It's not actually a bad thing to make a claim. If you need to make a claim, make a claim. And with all of these insurances, there's no point paying them if you're not going to claim on them. So make sure you claim them if, you, if you're eligible to claim. It's yeah. not a bad thing to use insurance that's available to you. Kate, there's one final thing here, which is an emergency fund. We covered this in a separate episode, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is the best way you can insure yourself against all sorts of life circumstances, whether that's you need to take a, a last minute flight to see a sick family member, you need to leave a bad situation, you need to quit a bad job, whatever it is, you've got that three to six months of living expenses set aside in its own bank account to cover you when those unexpected things happen. And especially if you're going to have to pay excess, I mean, one of my friends recently had to pay a $2,000 excess um, because there was a scratch on another vehicle. So that was something they had to pull out of their emergency fund. Um, if you're stuck overseas and for some reason your travel insurance doesn't kick in straight away or you can't access it, you need to have money put aside to help you. So I think it's really important to um, have emergency fund for all sorts of reasons. But if you want to self cover for something like pet insurance and just put money aside, then thinking, well, maybe I should increase my emergency fund by a thousand or two thousand dollars a year. Yep. So this is super important. We say um, six months is ideal, probably. Yeah. If you're a bit older, if you're nearing retirement, maybe push it out to two years of your living expenses set aside in cash, put it in an account where you can't touch it. Imagine like broken glass. Uh, it's on the other side of the glass. You only break into that if you really need to. Um, but this can cover you for excess. It can cover you for medical emergencies and all the things you don't have insurance for immediately. This can be your life, um, I guess, what is it, life raft? So this is why I call it the cheapest form of insurance mm. you'll ever get because it actually is free and it pays you interest if you put it in a high interest savings account or if you have it in your mortgage offset account if you're a homeowner, which is where I would put it. Um, it saves you on paying interest on a mortgage. So yeah, and if you're someone that struggles right. having that cash put aside in the bank account because you're like, oh, I should invest it or do something. If you start to think of it as your insurance fund, maybe that might help you a little bit with leaving that money aside. For sure. Okay, so just as a quick recap of this episode, we've talked about life, death, um, TBD and income protection. So those are three types of insurance that you can get inside your super fund. You can also get them outside your super fund. Income protection outside your super fund can actually be tax deductible as well. Uh, health insurance, if you're under 30, um, you can consider getting insurance. Uh, if you're over 30, it's going to cost you a little bit more for every year you go past that. But under $90,000, um, you're not going to pay the medical levy surcharge. Um, as, a, as a single, it's $180,000 for a couple. It can help with all different things. We've got ambulance cover. Look it up for what's required in your state. Uh, we've got extras cover, which is not actually the core health uh, insurance, but it actually is important for dental, uh, dental, optical, et cetera. And we've got health insurance in there, which covers you for a hospital. Um, car insurance, we've got three levels. We've got uh, third party, which is bomb insurance. We've got um, third party fire and theft, which covers you for the bomb and for fire and theft if your bomb gets stolen. Um, and the third one, which is the top level of cover is comprehensive car insurance. Home and contents, home is your building. Uh, contents is everything that tips out. Make sure you read the T's and C's. Pet insurance is for cats and dogs and not camels. Uh, funeral insurance is probably not advisable unless you really think it's worth it yeah. through the numbers. Travel insurance, Kate's probably going to take off overseas in the next 12 months judging by the look on her face right now because we're talking about insurance. And uh, travel insurance covers you for a lot, but make sure you read the T's and C's. If you're on a tuk-tuk in um, Indonesia and you have a few beers in you, you're probably not going to be covered. Work cover covers your work. Emergency funds is your get out of jail free card yes. if something goes wrong. Kate, that is insurance. What an episode. And we'll have links to learn a little bit more about all of these different types of insurances in the we show notes. Will. So that's it's your action for point for today. If any of these uh, intrigued you or made you go, oh, maybe I should have this kind of insurance, have a look at the show notes and we'll have details, um, whether it's the government website or whatever's most appropriate, a comparison site maybe in the show notes so you can learn more. Yep, fantastic. Kate, that's insurance. As always, thanks for joining me. What an episode. Thanks for listening, everyone.